Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast. This is episode number 325, Food Choices, a Netflix documentary. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Maupin and Brett are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about hormone replacement therapy for women, which is available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. In the last year or two, we have seen a number of special productions, uh, movies, documentaries, TV shows that have come out challenging the food industry in the United States, the regulatory uh, food and agricultural department uh, decisions that are made, the food pyramid being changed to a food plate Mm -hmm. uh, as politicians, marketers, and scientists all try to persuade one another that this is the healthiest diet for the most number of people in the United States, and this is the way we can cut our food costs, live longer, and be happier. So Kathy and I have been watching those, and we talk about them a lot, and we've done some other podcasts on topics that fall under that umbrella. This week we found a movie on Netflix. Uh, It was a documentary, and it was called Food Choices. And they interviewed maybe a dozen different nutritionists and scientists and psychologists on their thoughts about food and what we as a society needed to know and consider. And they have some interesting things to say. They have some things that we agree with, but they have what we call bad science. And if you followed us at all, you know that one of the things we often talk about when we do medical research and discuss the conclusions is we talk about the research. Who did it? What are their parameters? Who paid for it? Uh, What's the ultimate message? How accurately do they do their statistics? Um, their database, and so on. So we have some questions about the way the Food Choice documentary articulates its case. These people are, by their nature, causist. They have a cause, and they're mm-hmm. promoting their cause, and they're promoting it uh, intensely and with lots of data. And as we watched it, questions occurred to us. They and also so, want it to be universally used. Yes. They think it should well, be they have the right a, answer. a universal answer for everyone. Well, that's the way causes. And that's, causes and that's my definition. first problem. <laughs> that's your first problem. All right. My first problem we'll is start there. I have a problem with their logic. In mm-hmm. many of their arguments, their logic isn't sound. So when you say food for everyone should eat this, mm-hmm. we are genetically different. And we are genetically from different areas of the world. And we all have different needs in terms of our physiology. So One diet for everyone is never going to work. That's just a different, that's just my first step. They do make a nod in that direction. When they talk about hunting and gathering societies evolving and living in temperate zones. But they didn't say they should still be hunter-gatherers. They said they should be No, but then they talk about the Eskimos in the far Arctic where there are no vegetables that are Mm -hmm. grown or fruits that are available. Mm -hmm. Then they eat meat and blubber. And animal protein is the entirety of their diet. But it's it's a limited group of people in an isolated part of the world. So so they do say there's an exception. But that's not what you're talking about. What you're talking about is in a community like the United States with more than 300 million people, we can't do a one-size-fits-all diet. It just doesn't. It just isn't going to work for everyone. Everyone right. has a different need. Mm-hmm. Okay, so so that was my that was really my first thing that was um, bothering me and. Let me preface this as these people are vegans, not vegetarians. They're vegans. They do not believe in eating any animal, anything. So no milk, no eggs, no cheese, no, no dairy, no, dairy no, fish. No, no fish, nothing that is other than a vegetable. I didn't hear them say anything about fruit either, but it's... No, they did say, they okay. said fruit. You need to eat fruit. They, they recommend that you have a plant-based diet that is focused on four food groups, uh, fruits, vegetables, whole grains, and legumes. And so that's what they think you should eat. We all should eat. Because? Because we get more fiber, we get more potassium, 
Our cholesterol and, goes down, supposedly. And our cholesterol goes down, and, and we live healthier lives. They, they talk about nutritional ignorance and <laughs> poor choice making. Well, I agree that there's a lot of that, but I don't think that making a choice to eat eggs is a is a ignorance. Mm-hmm. I mean, eggs are kind of the perfect food if you get farm eggs and you don't get eggs that came off a conveyor belt. Now, they talk about well, all that eggs. Is, that's the egg market. They talk about they talk all about. eggs being mm-hmm. from the conveyor belt and that they can't have nutrition. Yet, those of us who eat pasture eggs, those eggs have a lot of nutrition and they're very good for you. It's kind of the perfect food. So there's no animal that is growing in these eggs. They're not fertilized. They talk about fertilized eggs. They're not fertilized eggs. They're, they're without fertilization, but they're still the nutrition it takes to make a, a chicken Mm -hmm. basically. So they miss some of these little steps in their arguments that make it seem like this is something terrible. You should never look an egg in the eye. You should never eat an egg. It's bad for you. Even the eggs that are off conveyor belts have a good source of protein. My biggest problem with with people who say you can only eat plants is that there are 11 amino acids you can't get from plants, that they have to come from meat and, and white or red meat. And that is something that, well, I can't, I won't say that you can't get them. It's very difficult to get them from plants. So you have to have a very careful diet to get all the amino acids. Amino acids make up your brain, they make up your muscles, they make up your skin. You need to have all of those to be healthy. And if you're now vegetarians, those are people who eat milk, eggs, not nothing that currently has a heart. Vegan and Yes, vegan is only plants. Vegetarian, they call themselves in this thing vegetarian, the vegetarian diet, but it, really they describe a vegan diet. Vegetarian is you can eat eggs, you can eat you can eat fish, you can eat anything that isn't cheese. warm-blooded. Mm-hmm. You can eat cheese, and to make up all of those amino, amino acids, it's easy if you add everything but meat, basically everything that doesn't have a, that isn't warm-blooded. Yeah, a face or a heartbeat. A face. Well, fish have heartbeats, mm. and you might say they have a face. Okay. So they do eat fish. Okay. So vegetarians do. Mm-hmm. So in a vegetarian diet, yes, it's, you know, you can eat. I mean, I, I got the diet off of Wikipedia. Basically, if you, you can eat eggs, yogurt, you, to, you're required to eat eggs, yogurt, uh, cottage cheese, mushrooms, milk, tempa and natto, natto, cheese, soybeans, uh, cocoa powder, eggs, lentils, oats, so there are, beans, those are all within the concept of a vegetarian. Goats, cheese. Yeah. I mean, all of, right. that's vegetarian. It's not. But what these people were preaching was veganism. Okay. Which didn't have any of these to well, supply the, the amino they made acids. A specific quotation is they say the meat that we eat is from animals who eat vegetables. Right. And so we should skip the intermediary Animal. step and just eat the vegetables and then we'll be healthy. Okay. So here's where the problem is right. with that. That logic doesn't hold at all because as human beings, we can't make 11 amino acids. We can't, we have to get them from our food and where we get them is from, from in general, from meat, cheese, eggs, and, and that type of protein. So... They are, they are saying that you have to, you can get all of these from all these amino acids from the plants themselves without going through the meat. Now, animals make all of those amino acids and they store them in their muscles. That's what we eat. So we can get all of those amino acids from eating an animal, but not from eating the vegetables that the animals eat. Well, they do talk about moderation, and they do say that it's very, very, I mean, their argument is people always argue, well, I can just eat this in moderation, Mm -hmm. but that in America, none of us are moderate. Uh, They also argue that we have been marketed, which I do agree with what Mm -hmm. they say. Yeah, they've been, we've been marketed. We have been marketed for a processed food, fast food consumption, Mm -hmm. a convenience market. But I'm not for that either. No, you're not. (laughs) And and most people that talk seriously about healthy eating Mm -hmm. will say exactly the same thing. You shouldn't eat the processed foods. You shouldn't eat the processed sugars. Mm-hmm. You shouldn't eat uh, too much 
protein. I mean, mm -hmm. like you don't need a 38 ounce steak, <laughs> no. uh, but mm -hmm. you need a certain a few amount ounces. Of yeah. So portion size, mm -hmm. food choice, food preparation, fresh, mm -hmm. fresh greens, fresh fruits. The preponderance of your diet may need to be plant based. Sure. And it makes you but, healthier. But then, if it's plant based, you have to eat. A lot of plants Dark, and a lot green, of leafy. fresh, not well, not cooked. I mean, you ruin the enzyme systems and a lot of the nutrition cooking by cooking them. Yeah. Just by steaming them a little bit, it goes out. So, I mean, you're going to have to eat a lot of raw vegetables mm -hmm. and raw fruit. Well, raw fruit's okay for me. And, and actually, raw vegetables, I eat a lot of those. I eat like yellow peppers as an apple or I, you know, or red peppers or whatever, or sweet peppers mm -hmm. or things like that. I eat cucumber rye, you know, but usually I dip them in sour cream or yogurt or something. But right. a lot of these things, I mean, I do all that, but I also eat some meat, some eggs, some cheese, some, you know, milk products. Right. So I think it's more a... They were damning everything that was from an animal. Well, they also had some pretty negative comments to make about the food supplement industry. Yeah. Uh, for instance, I remember specifically they were talking about uh, omega-3 fatty acids. Mm -hmm. And they, their statement, and as a physician, mm -hmm. you will know this much better than I, that what we need are, we need for our healthy nutrition, omega-3 and omega-6. Mm -hmm. And that pretty much the balance is a one-to-one -one ratio. Mm -hmm. but that our processed food diets mm -hmm. have now skewed our consumption heavy to omega-6. Mm -hmm. So it's like a 1 to 25 or 1 to 30 Six ratio. And, nine. Yeah. and so then the dietary supplement of an omega-3 uh, supplement is marketed to us to reset the balance. Well, that you could look at it that way, but I market it to people who just don't eat a lot of fat. They don't eat a lot of fish. They mm -hmm. don't eat a lot of things that we get mm -hmm. that those omega threes from, mm -hmm. they don't eat a lot of nuts. They don't, they just don't eat a lot of that. And because of that, their brains are, are made of omega threes. So I add that. So it doesn't mean that I, I think I'm, I, people can eat whatever they want and they mm -hmm. can eat all the processed foods they want and then just take some omega three and have it bless them and make them whole again. It's not, it doesn't do that. No, I don't, I don't think that's what they were saying in the film though. I think what they were saying is there's just this huge mass market for the production of supplements. Their argument is if you ate this diet that they suggest, mm -hmm. you wouldn't need the supplements. Well, you would, you need a supplement well, and, that's your and that's the deal. Exactly. If you don't have all those amino acids, I have lots of patients that come in and say, you know, I'm a vegan and I'm not going to eat any animal products. And if that's their belief, because it's their belief, then we have to work around that. And they need to get some supplements that are going to give them the amino acids that they need and the quantity that they need it instead of animal products. But what I find is people view this as an exclusion diet. We just exclude all animal products and we can eat anything else we want, which means they eat donuts. They eat, I'm not kidding. I mean, a bit, lots of breads and then they get diabetes and then they, I mean, they drink every night, three or three drinks a night, half a bottle of wine. They think that's fine because it's vegan. I mean, that to me is not e eating healthy. So what they, they propose and what people actually do right. is different because yeah, if you eat everything fresh and raw. So, so then we're making two arguments here. One is that they are causes who are promoting a solution that they think is a solution. Right. But it's not the a solution other for is, us. Right. But the other argument that they're making then, or you're, that they're making, is that people won't or can't discipline themselves to eat these diets, which is part of the problem. Yeah, it is part of the problem. And and, and they acknowledge that. They, they talk about the people that say, well, I'll just eat this in moderation. And they make the same statement mm -hmm. about vegetarians who quit eating meat who suddenly decide, well, I can eat a lot of, of pasta. I can eat a lot of donuts. I can A lot of other processed foods. A lot of other processed mm -hmm. foods. So they keep coming back to what I think you do agree with. The less processed foods you eat, the, the more better. fresh greens you eat, the more whole grains, the more legumes, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of nuts in your food, fruit is, as it's seasonal as you can get it. Mm -hmm. But what they didn't talk about, as I remember. No, they didn't talk about how do you make up for it. What they didn't talk about is all the chemicals that are used to produce 
agriculture in the United States and how those chemicals get into our diet. They talk about how it gets into our diet from eating meat products. They talked you the know, very like, first like, thing they said uh -huh. was about the the chemicals that are sprayed on our fruit and vegetables and how bad the the ground or the land is that we're we're out farming our land and we're not replenishing it mm -hmm. with the minerals that that they need to make healthy food which to me would be fruit and vegetables and and grains mm -hmm. so and then they turn around and say that's the only thing you should eat that's in the very beginning of this of, of this presentation and I kind of went. Well, that's not the way, I mean, that's not going to help people who are just eating things that are sprayed. And I mean, I know that there are organic farms, but not all organic farms can feed America. I mean, we, there's no way that's going to or ever. Or the world. I mean, a lot world. of the food we grow here is shipped overseas. My, my answer to um, not having sprays mm -hmm. is GMOs. You can either have sprays and chemicals in your food, or you can have genetically changed foods that will, will be resistant to drought. Or I'm not saying one's better than the other. I'm just saying those There's are your two choices choice yeah. in the present time. Mm -hmm. That's it. You could have your own garden, but in Missouri, your garden is going to be gone most of the year. You're not going to have enough to to sustain you through the winter. Mm -hmm. And uh, and th so this is a, a a choice. So we have scientific centers that do. GMOs mm -hmm. in the city, and they don't do it to take out the nutrition. They do it so they can sustain themselves and feed. Make the plant hardy, make it functional, make it able to grow in, in drought, environments that are more harsh than it typically grows. To feed in. the world. To feed the world. So, right. so it's either starvation, GMOs, or or chemicals. Eh, what are you going to choose if you have right. that as a choice? So Americans don't generally have that as a choice. They can get food. Whether the food is nutritious or not is something else. Well, and I think it's important for us in our conversation to go back a minute. When we're talking about vegans, uh, what we didn't mention is that some people are vegans because of philosophical reasons. Yeah, I mean. Uh, and, and or vegetarians because mm -hmm. of philosophical reasons. Right. And the philosophy involved is about not, not taking life or consuming mm -hmm. live animals mm -hmm. uh, products because they think, life is sacred right. and that they should not violate that by, by being carnivorous. Mm -hmm. We respect that. If that's mm -hmm. your point of view, if that's your perspective, we do respect that. However, we would say to you that requires a level of discipline on your part to avoid the things you want to avoid and find other things to consume that will make your life healthy. And the question that we then have is, are you doing the things that you need to do to honor your philosophy and still be healthy. Because that is the ultimate goal, goal for Dr. Maupin and her practice is to help people live healthy lives longer, functional lives longer, so that you don't get to the latter stages of your life and become not able to function, not able to stand up, not able to walk, not able to play bridge. Because without those bedroom. amino acids, you lose muscle mass and you can't stand up, and then you can't, and your bones get thinner, osteoporosis. and osteoporosis, it doesn't matter if I give you testosterone or not, if you don't have the building blocks for muscle, you're not making any. Right. So you have to really work at it. You have to find out what kind of amino acid supplements you can take. They don't want supplements either, but you have to have some supplements to actually replace the fact that you don't eat any animal products. We can't make them like animals do. No, but, but your point is, as a physician who runs a practice that focuses on these issues, mm -hmm. your point is, I need to spend time with you to know what your philosophy is, mm -hmm. what your values are, how you live, mm -hmm. what your lifestyle is, mm -hmm. and then we need to work on replacing the hormones that you need. Mm -hmm. We need to work on the exercise regimen that's mm -hmm. best for you and the diet regimen that's best for you. And that diet regimen may include the use of supplements, specific mm -hmm. ones for specific mm -hmm. reasons. So it's not part of what Food Choices talks about, the mass production to make big corporate empires wealthy. Uh, so they sell all these supplements and all these additives and so on. That is not what you do. That is not your approach. Mm -mm. No. You don't support that. I don't support you do any support of that. The, the valid assessed use of appropriate diet choices, exercise choices, supplement choices, so that mm -hmm. people can be healthy. That's based right. on what, what science tells us makes them healthy. And if you're going to go to all the trouble to come to me to be healthy, yeah. then 
should probably listen to some of the suggestions I have about helpful. diet, which would be get your get your pieces of proteins in your diet somehow. Mm -hmm. And I mean, the easiest thing I would think you're not killing anything t except fish to be a vegetarian, right? Well, and that's. I mean, if that's a philosophical issue, don't eat fish and then eat the other things that are products of animals, but not like dairy, like eggs. dairy and eggs. I mm -hmm. mean, those things c carry a lot of the building blocks of muscles. Right. And I don't actually eat, drink raw milk. I mean, I well, never I, have. I was just going to say that there is I don't an really argument to be made about raw milk because of the antibiotics that are in the food stream that the cattle eat that come into the raw milk. Uh, but you can get you can get. Organic. Type of organic yeah. milk that doesn't have that, and right. and that's and you have to pay more, and you don't have to. Well, I always say if you pay more, you don't have to eat as much or drink as much. Right. So just drink less, pay more, get the good stuff, but just consume less, which would probably be good for all of us. But it doesn't mean it's a bad thing. No. You just have to choose properly. So so anyway, if you're interested in these topics, you might want to watch this particular uh, documentary for the content that it has and make up your own mind. Bring your own thoughts to anything that you watch or any argument that people make in terms of science. Science says this is the right way to live. Uh, consider the facts, consider the research, consider the opinions and have your own. I agree, thank you. Thank you for listening. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.